When you hear V12, you probably picture massive engines and heavyweight supercars. But real magic happens when that legendary V12 power is crammed into something small, light, and screaming with raw emotion. From the genius of Gordon Murray to the wild experiments of Yamaha and Ferrari's first heartbeat, this is the untold story of the smallest, fiercest V12 engines ever built. And in this video, we've compiled a list of the nine tiniest V12 engines that transformed a race car into an absolute beast on the track. If we're talking about custom-built V12 engines, it would surely be the Gordon Murray Automotive T50 with its 3.9 liter V12 engine. The T50 is a true work of art in automotive engineering. This car is designed by the genius himself, the same man behind the McLaren F1. We're talking about Gordon Murray, and with a name like that, you can already guess it's something special. The T50 features a 3.9 liter naturally aspirated V12, developed in collaboration with Cosworth, a company renowned for its motorsport pedigree. This V12 is incredibly lightweight, and believe it or not, it produces a jaw-dropping 654 horsepower while revving all the way up to a mind-blowing 12,100 RPM. That makes it one of the highest revving V12s in production today. This masterpiece of an engine is paired with a 6-speed manual transmission, making the T50 the ultimate driver's car. But the T50 isn't just about raw power, it's about precision. Its compact size and the high revving nature of its V12 offers an experience that's truly one of a kind. But our number 8 is going to blow your mind. In this segment, let's take a look at where it all began for one of Italy's most legendary brands. Ever wondered how Lamborghini's V12 legacy kicked off? Well, the answer lies in the 350 GT and its compact 3.5 liter V12 engine. The Lamborghini 350 GT was the first production car to wear the iconic Raging Bull badge, and under its long, elongated hood sat a 3.5 liter V12 engine designed by none other than Giotto Bizzarini. Bizzarini, a former Ferrari engineer, crafted this masterpiece of its time, producing an impressive 280 horsepower. This engine, though, wasn't just about power, it was about grace and balance. It featured six twin-barrel Weber carburetors, an aluminum block, and a five-speed manual transmission, making it not just quick, but refined. It laid the foundation for all of Lamborghini's future V12s, from the legendary Mura to the modern-day Aventador. Now, we've seen how Gordon Murray brought surgical precision to the T50, but what if an actual Formula One engine was crammed into a road car that looked like a fighter jet? Yep. That's exactly what Yamaha tried to do in the 90s with the OX99-11 and its insanely compact yet ferocious 3.5 liter V12. This wasn't just a road car, it was a science experiment on wheels. Yamaha had already been building F1 engines in collaboration with teams like Jordan and Terrell, and when they decided to step into the supercar arena, they didn't hold back. However, there was also another wild experiment going on to conquer Formula 1. For the full story, hold your horsepower till number 2. But the OX99-11's V12 came straight from Yamaha's Formula 1 program, pumping out around 400 horsepower and screaming up to a mind-melting 12,000 RPMs. But it wasn't just the engine that turned heads, it was the entire package. An absolute marvel, lightweight, compact, and razor-sharp in design. It looked more like a jet fighter than a car. Now, we've seen Lamborghini's refinement and Yamaha's wildness, but what if there was a V12 that bridged both worlds? Get ready to have your brain fried, because Ferrari delivered with the Lampretti 275 V12, sized at just 3.3 liters. Although there were Ferrari builds before this, the 275 marked a turning point. Designed by Aurelio Lampretti, this 3.3 liter V12 was developed as a more powerful alternative to the smaller Colombo unit. The Lampretti 275 engine powered icons like the Ferrari 275S and 275F1, leaving a lasting mark in early Formula 1 and sports car racing. With a longer stroke than the Colombo, it delivered a more muscular and torquey feel, perfect for long races and brutal acceleration. This V12 was heavier and more aggressive than Ferrari's earlier engines, but it proved one thing loud and clear. Ferrari wasn't just about finesse, they could flex raw muscle too. And they proved it once again, when after the Lampretti 275, they introduced the Ferrari 195 Inter with a 2.3 liter V12 engine. The Ferrari 195 Inter was powered by Enzo Ferrari's beloved Colombo V12. While it had a smaller displacement, it made a massive impact on the brand's future. 
This 2.3 liter masterpiece produced between 90 and 105 horsepower, depending on the version, enough to deliver solid performance while emphasizing a smooth, refined driving experience. This was a time when Ferrari wasn't just building track monsters, they were crafting luxury machines that could cross entire countries with elegance and ease. The 195 Inter was one of Ferrari's first models to be offered in multiple body styles, including Coupe, Cabriolet, and Spider, making it a truly versatile machine. But do you know where this small Ferrari V12 engine legacy started? Wait till you see number one. You will be amazed by the details coming up. But let's step into our number four part, and the question comes, have you ever wondered how such a small engine could power a brutally fast race car? Enter the BRM P126, a British racing machine that packed a 3-liter V12 engine as intense as it was underrated. This beast wasn't meant for the streets, it was born and bred for the battlefield of Formula 1. The natural aspiration 3-liter V12 under the hood produced between 420 to 435 horsepower. It was brutally loud, insanely responsive, and surprisingly compact for its time. The P126 ran with legendary teams, including Bruce McLaren's own outfit. While it never clinched championship glory, it gave BRM a real fighting chance during one of the most competitive eras in F1 history. Sure, it had its share of DNFs thanks to mechanical gremlins, but when it worked, it worked. The engine was especially praised for its explosive power delivery and high-end acceleration, dominating on circuits where top speed mattered more than long-term reliability. But if the BRM P126 was a British brute force, then the Westlake 58 was a poetic powerhouse, made legendary by the Eagle Mark I. There are plenty of 3-liter V12s out there, but none are as romantic, or as tragic, as this one. Designed by Harry Westlake, the engine was compact, elegant, and way ahead of its time. It could scream up to 10,000 RPM and produce over 400 horsepower, which was nothing short of miraculous in the mid-1960s. And then there was the Eagle Mark I itself, piloted by none other than Dan Gurney, the only American to ever win a Formula One Grand Prix in a car he built himself. That win at the 1967 Belgian Grand Prix? Pure history in motion. But despite its sky-high potential, the Westlake 58 was plagued by reliability issues and a serious lack of funding. Unlike Ferrari or BRM, Westlake didn't have the resources to refine the engine, and it faded from the grid far too soon. Still, in terms of size, sound, and spirit, the Westlake 58 absolutely earns its place amongst the smallest, wildest, and most ambitious V12s ever made. Now, if you thought 3 liters was small, wait till you see what's coming up. The engine at number one on our list will eat your brain. But first, let's take a look at the wild Alfa Romeo Tipo 1260, sitting at number two. With the Tipo 1260, Alfa, in a wild experiment, introduced a 2.5 liter V12 that wasn't just compact, it was built to conquer Formula One. This underrated gem was developed in the early 1980s for Alfa Romeo's F1 campaign, particularly during their time supplying engines to teams like Euro Racing. Unlike Ferrari's smooth and elegant Colombo V12, the Tipo 1260 was raw, high-strung, and straight-up temperamental. It pumped out around 540 horsepower and revved to an insane 11,000 RPM, battling head-to-head -head with the likes of Ford Cosworth and Renault turbos of the era. But the real magic? The sound. This engine screamed like a banshee, echoing with that signature Italian flair. It was compact, lightweight, and a tight fit for the narrow F1 chassis. Still, despite its technical brilliance, the engine had its flaws, mainly in the reliability department. Alpha just couldn't find the consistency needed to dominate the grid. Even so, the Tipo 1260 deserves massive respect for what it tried to be, a naturally aspirated V12 warrior in a turbocharged war zone. And now, finally, we've arrived at our most awaited, slickest engine so far. We've seen underdog screamers and wild Italian racers, but what if I told you that Ferrari's entire V12 legacy, the empire we know today, started with a motor smaller than most modern four-cylinders? It all began with a 1.5-liter Colombo V12, the beating heart of the Ferrari 125S, the company's very first car. Giacchino Colombo, the genius behind this engine, created something so compact it looked like a scaled-down model. Despite its tiny 1.5-liter displacement, it produced around 118 horsepower, huge numbers for its size back in the day. 
And unlike the big bore American muscle engines that relied on brute force, this little V12 was all about precision, balance, and high revving excitement. Its compact size allowed Ferrari to experiment with lightweight chassis and agile race dynamics, and it worked. This engine helped secure Ferrari's very first victories, both on the track and in the history books. Without it, Ferrari might have never become Ferrari.